Generic video opening. Greetings, friends, family, and, you know, hopefully, uh, like a reoccurring viewer or two. We're doing a special video today, one that's kind of out of the ordinary uh, for Couch Force, and really it's kind of like an end of an era video. If you haven't noticed, uh, Couch Force is kind of somewhat on an indefinite hiatus, um, and that's probably going to continue for the uh, time being. Uh, videos will probably be rare and far and in between, uh, but that, I hope that Couch Force videos still get created because I love creating, and that's kind of the whole point of this video that I'm going to be doing today. And don't worry, me and Cole are on great terms. There's no problems with me and Cole. It's just YouTube is hard. YouTube is very hard with keeping up with uh, more than anything just because if you're not making money off of it, you're dedicating hours to editing, to recording, to thumbnails, to art. You know, you're constantly doing stuff for YouTube. It's a non-stop job almost. And for us, and especially me, it has been a, a passion and just a side project basically. Uh, for me it's been for the past 15 years and that's kind of what this whole video is going to be uh, I want to talk about those 15 years on YouTube because I personally want to continue to make solo content at the very least over on my main channel and so this video is kind of taking you through the history of me um, I want to talk about who I am you know as an individual what drives me what I've done before Couch Force and now after Couch Force because I have the joy of creation. I like making things, I like making videos, I like being entertaining. It's what I've always wanted to do and uh, although I've never seen it become a career, it's something that I want to continue to do. And I want you to know that me as a person goes a lot deeper than just the sailor mouth, you know, wacky Couch Force member. But to do that, we're going to have to go all the way back to 2009. I started my first channel, Tyler Rocks, in 2009. I was only 11 years old. I remember uh, when I made the channel, I told my parents I was so excited because I was super influenced by people at the time like Smosh or uh, Balloon Shop and I wanted to make skit-like videos and I had been doing this for a long time before this. Uh, I wish I had some of my old videos that me and my brother had recorded on our old webcam or handy cam or whatever they're called. I remember that when I told my mom, she said, now you need to make sure that you only put 10 videos up at a time because we don't want to be polluting the internet with nonsense. I don't know if that was a joke from her or trying to keep me safe from the internet or if it was just genuine if she thought that uh, I would actually be overloading the internet to a point where it's just nonsense and no more information out there. Really gotta get around to asking her that one. If she even remembers. But because of that, um, a lot of my early videos have been deleted and are gone. And that's very unfortunate because although some of them were stupid, like I think I made a cat compilation video of just images of cats, not even cat videos. There's still videos I would love to see because at this time and for a, a little while after and kind of still today, I treated... YouTube is my scrapbooking or like my history archive where I really wanted to keep doing YouTube because I wanted to be able to look back at any point in my life and be like oh damn this is what I was doing then or this is what I was into and a lot of that is lost because although the videos that got deleted I deleted because I deemed they weren't good enough to be on the channel to justify being one of my 10 videos um they're still a part of my history, as goofy as that sounds, and I wish I had them. Now, eventually I did obviously break that rule. I mean, I had to have to get to the point that I am now, but that channel does actually have 17 videos on it as of right now. As far as I know, that's how it's gonna stay because I don't have any access to that channel. As far as I'm aware, I couldn't get into it. I'm not even positive what email would be connected to that channel. Now, this channel was basically like my home videos era, if I haven't really made that clear. Um, I did some skits, but some of it is also just filming what's going on around me. And then a few, a bit of the other stuff is just kind of like throwing darts at the board, which you will notice that a lot from now until eventually I hit BitPixel slash Highland Deathbat. I was just attempting whatever I could. So um, the very first video that I really remember from this channel is my birthday video. Hello, Box here, and this is my birthday party. Here is. <laughs> <Dinner>! <laughs> 
um, in it you get to see a bunch of my friends doing my 11th birthday party and we will be seeing and talking about some of these people a little bit more in depth later but um, as of right now I'm just going to say that I come back to this video a lot I think it's incredibly cringy but funny um, just because we are filled with such a joy and excited to film and everyone is so excited to be on camera and say something except for a few people which um, kind of makes sense because in the future those people didn't really stick around and help me make future content like some of these other guys did. Speaking of cringy, I love my intro video for this channel. It's just me being excited. Uh, this was back when you could put annotations on the screen. If you want, if you guys want to, here is a link to my channel right about now. Ah uh ha ha. I bet you didn't know that was there. You'll never figure out how I got that there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think any of those have survived in modern YouTube. Uh, if you don't know what annotations is, it is where you can put text on the screen in little boxes. Uh, and I think I even had links to like Smosh and Fred's channel saying that they were my friends. Uh, because I was a kid, I didn't know any better. One of my favorite darts that I threw at the board in this channel is trying to do stop motion. Uh, I was heavily influenced by Force Fire 101 stop motion videos, uh, specifically Lego stop motion. So I have a couple attempts here of doing stop motion, but the way I did it is ridiculous and actually hilarious. The way I did it was I took photos with a camera and then instead of putting those images into a you know, a program to make it like stop motion, duh, 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 duh. I just recorded that camera with another camera and flipped through the photos and narrated it as I was doing it. I just think that is ad adorable, really. The rest of this channel is just kind of shit posting and, and, and vlog stuff and just, like I said, home videos. Nothing special about it. I mean, there's a video of me and my, my friend with a frog, me and my friend recording, you know, a stupid random skit in, in the bedroom me jumping in a cold pool like there's nothing phenomenal or remarkable about this channel it's just is special to me because it is the first that i really did anything and while i was doing tyler rocks uh funny things were happening i was starting to connect with people that i never had connected with before in my life i started to really explore the internet and it opened up a lot to me in terms of communicating with people from the outside world because up to this point you know i'm 11 or 12 like i i'm the only friends I have are the ones I've met in person. But one day I upload a video that is sadly now deleted called uh, like how to make Lego Mario minifigure. And I get this comment on there from a person named Lego Dude 580 and they're just kind of telling me, you know, that they really like the figure. I would later find out that they were actually looking through Lego videos to compare and see if their figure was better than mine or whoever they were looking up. Naive, goofy me at the time saw this first comment I ever got, or one of the first, and I just kind of replied to it and said, you know, thanks, you know, and then I think, I don't really know what happened from there, but I remember we started privately messaging, um, and we started talking about music and games and all kinds of stuff, and eventually that turned into Skype calls, actually talking to each other. Um, I was thankful to find out this wasn't a 30-year-old man, but it was actually... Uh, someone who is just a little bit younger than me, uh, and it's one of my best friends, Rev. And to this day, you know, 15, 14 years later, me and Rev are still great friends. We still keep up almost day to day, and uh, I'm very grateful to have them as a friend, and I think that's awesome. I think it's so cool that 11-year-old, 12-year-old me was doing, just doing YouTube casually, and then boom, I've got this friend who lives, you know, nearly across the world from me. At the same time, I started another channel for my friend Jake, and we were going to do skit-like videos on there and actually make it more skit-dedicated. Uh, there's only one video on here that I think doesn't include any kind of skit or anything like that at all. And I have to say, these videos are obnoxious. I don't know if I could sit down and watch a full one of these uh, today because we use stupid high-pitched voices and are trying to be like the next Fred. Special delivery for Jake! Hey, my iPod! Give me a joke! Uh. 
but I do look fondly on them because this was the first time that one of my friends wanted to solely create something with me. Even if it was stupid, even if we were just filming videos in my room, it was the first time that anyone outside of my brother had sat down with me and was like, let's make something stupid. Let's have fun. Let's record this and have fun. I mean, these videos are terrible. There's like, why well, I'm afraid of cats. Saving Slinky Puppy because I had this plush dog that, uh, I don't know, he wanted to make a video about. Um, Jake gets an iPod Nano, like stupid stuff. Like it was supposed to be our stupid little Fred, Fred the Jason channel. I'm so glad that it exists. I'm so glad it's still there, even though I think it's one of the cringiest things that we've ever created. And uh, I appreciate Jake for being there and creating with me. I mean, it's it's an awesome thing to be able to go back and look at. I mean, we were even doing like deleted scenes videos and interview, the fake interview videos. The bloopers were very much real. But as I started to get more comfortable with YouTube and uploading and um, trying to create content, I started to want to go a little bit more serious about it. Actually making things that were serialized and you could follow and keep up with instead of skits that we threw together in like five minutes. So let's jump forward to 2010 and talk about the David channel. Now the David channel has a kind of interesting, you know, funny origin story. After meeting someone online for the first time, uh, I kind of got the itch to do it some more. Um, so I went to safer communities, or at least ones I figured were safer. And I was very huge on Animal Crossing uh, City Folk at the time. So I went on Animal Crossing Community and started making friends. Which Animal Crossing Community is just a forum website for specifically Animal Crossing. You can make trades there, talk to people who have modded the game, or make friends, stuff like that. But I made this one friend named David and we quickly became relatively good internet friends and were playing Animal Crossing almost every day. One day, I convinced them to make a YouTube channel. And they did. And I kind of mostly selfishly did this because I just wanted another free subscriber. But I was hoping maybe they would make more content. I don't remember really why they gave me the email and password, but they did to their YouTube channel. And after, you know, kind of losing contact with David and uh, seeing that they weren't really using the channel, I decided to take it for me. <laughs> so with the login and all that, I logged into the David channel for the first time. Uh, from here, I'm going to be referring to it just as the David channel because um, the full name is a serious mouthful. I remember back in the day for my intros of the videos, I would say David9876543214321, say it fast, you got it right. And I hope that if you heard that and you've been a long time fan or you're a friend of mine who's been following my content closely, I hope you got a little bit stiff from hearing me say that because I, I did. I did. I popped the chub. But that was my catchphrase. That was like how I would open every video. I figured I needed something that would kind of hook you in or instantly make the video recognizable as my own. And so I got right to work to um, filming videos and I wanted to do game playthroughs. I was heavily inspired by people like Nintendo Capri Sun, Josh Jepsen, Cherry Con Conroy at this time. And I wanted to just do Let's Plays. I didn't have the computer or the materials to necessarily do really good videos but I could do videos that I was still proud of at the time. I just recently figured out how to emulate games, so I was pretty big on wanting to do Super Nintendo games, so a lot of that early channel is mostly either Super Nintendo games or Wii games that I just played on my actual console. And of course, like I said, I didn't have the materials to make it very professional at the time, so most of these videos were recorded with a webcam or a camera, and my microphone was actually a rock band microphone that I had stuck in a cup so I would sit there on the table because I didn't have a mic stand either, or if I did, I wasn't very comfortable sitting with it in between my legs. You got that right. It's Let's Play Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong Country was the very first playthrough I ever did, and I think about it all the time. I think about my crazy high-pitched voice. I think about uh, how I filmed it with a camera. Uh, I think about that channel a lot, and I, it's another one that I wish I had to log into just to kind of go through the details of it. Especially to see if I've gotten any comments on videos, because the only way to find out if I've gotten comments on videos is maybe to sort by the most popular and go through those videos and see if there's any comments. Fun fact about my most popular video, it's actually a uh, 3D Space Cadet Pinball video with like 3,000 views. I think my top two videos are both Space Cadet Pinball videos. 
and the comments for those is mostly people either saying, I got this score, I got this score, or fucking, uh, I, I, your score sucks, I could beat you, and I was, you know, I'm 12 at the time, so that was impressive of people. And I, I did this channel for a long time, you know, at least compared relatively to Tyler Rocks. This channel ran for like two years, and I had plenty of fully played through games that I did. I think I played through all of Mario Galaxy 2, all of Donkey Kong Country, probably Mario 64. I mean, I played through a lot. Banjo-Kazooie probably, maybe, I'm not sure. And I remember one of my favorite little details about this channel is all the videos were recorded when my parents would be watching football on Sundays or Saturdays, uh, because I knew no one would bother me. I could sit there and record uh, just unashamedly. I don't really have a whole lot to say about this channel. It is mostly just gameplays, and it is a part of my history, but nothing really special happened on this channel outside of the things I said. Uh, I do have one little funny moment that I'd like to share, which is, uh, I think it's during my first Animal Crossing Let's Mess Around on. You can see as the screen cuts to fucking black, you can see me cocoon into my shirt. And I think it's one of the funniest things of all time. It's one of my favorite little clips I have. Even though it's not intentionally funny, it's hilarious in retrospect. There's one last channel I want to mention before I move on to uh, the bigger parts or the future. And that's a, a channel called Naruto Masters 102. This video isn't anything super impressive content wise. I mean, it's only 10 videos that were all recorded within a weekend at an Arkansas vacation trip. But I just think not only is this channel kind of adorable because it's just us talking about Naruto because we had a huge passion at the time, but it's the first time that I really collaborated with my close friend Tanner and made a channel dedicated to just us and our interest. Which, again, we've got Jake Rocks now, which was a channel with Jake. And then Naruto Masters, which was a channel for Tanner. So I think it was very obvious at this time that I desired collaboration and really wanted to work with people outside of myself. I think that's the best way to get videos done, at least the ones that I wanted to do at the time. And my dream was about to come true. Although the next thing I'm about to talk about is a very short, brief project. It's exactly what I wanted from all the stuff that I had been doing with my friends. In 2013, me and my friends started a channel called Amy's Cake Productions. Uh, I don't remember if we were over for my birthday or if we had just planned to make this video with a bunch of friends, but we were going to make skits, like actual super fully realized planned out skits with like a director and an editor and actors. And those friends who joined up with me included my friend Daniel who wanted to go by the name Slim Anus 420 at the time. I get to expose my beauty to the world. There was my friend Tanner who wanted to go by the screen name Naknitsa at the time. Hey. I like directing. My friend Brody who was going by the screen name Hambone Junior 100 at the time. For the comedy. I love to do it for the shits and giggles. My friend Connor who was at the time going by Dusty Impact but is now going by Needles now. That's what I, I guess I like the idea that we're making things and expressing ourselves in that sense. I love you. <laughs> of course, my good friend Jake was there, and he was going by Cheddar Cheese 51 at the time. Ask me a freaking question. <laughs> and it was great, you know, we made a stupid interview video and a stupid skit video that we thought was hilarious. We even had a bloopers reel for that one video we did. And although I didn't really collaborate with Tanner, Jake, or Daniel in the future, uh, I loved that I got to, and I would love to do something with them again in the future if I ever saw them. I'm turning you into cheese puff. Mm. Mm. Now Connor and Brody, I actually would later re-collaborate with them and continue to collaborate with them. Connor was one of my best friends at the time and still is, and we made a lot of content side by side together during my future highly in death bat slash bit pixel era. But he even features on some later Couch Force videos and I'm glad that I got to have him around. For that, I'm glad that he has a place on that channel that is forever there. As well as Brody. Brody was uh, featured in the Luigi's Mansion playthrough for Couch Force. And so was my friend Austin. Love those guys. Fucking special dudes. And I will talk more about Couch Force for sure later in this video. And I wish this is the channel that got more attention. Not just from people, but from us. I wish that we would have came back and made more videos for this. Because this was a joy to shoot. This was my favorite thing up to this point that I had ever made and shot. I was with friends. I was with people who saw the vision uh, and, and, and also shared 
you know, partially at least, the joy of creation. Putting something together and making it work. I have a lot of side channels that I'm not really talking about here today, but a lot of them are me vlogging with these guys or creating with these guys. And this was, you know, my circle. These were the people that I wanted to keep around me because they love doing what I do and want to do. And that's, you know, cherishable. And I'm glad this is the channel that I can talk about before we move forward uh, because these are some of the memories that I cherish most. And after this point on YouTube, it just kind of became a solo gig. You know, I'm not really counting about Coffee Couch Force, but I'm talking about with these guys, with my friends, you know. I didn't really see these guys that much after this channel or this video. I mean, this was over 10 years ago now. And I still keep up with some of them, and, and I'm thankful that all of them are doing, you know, very well. This finally makes us jump forward to 2014 when I created the BitPixel channel. This channel obviously is now known as Highline Deathbat, but at the time it was BitPixel, and I had a side channel called BitPixel Productions. This channel was created because I was at the end of my rope on David channel, and I wanted to start getting a little bit more professional. Uh, I wanted to use a capture card, I had, a bit, I had an actual computer at this time, and I finally started to want to make videos that, you know, I would watch. Because this is when I realized that I really wanted to do YouTube as a career, I wanted to make it serious. And although I've never really hit that stride, I have kept doing YouTube because I just love it. I just love creating stuff. This channel is almost at 300 videos, and I'm going to push that forward in the future, but let's talk about the past of it. A lot of this channel is very similar to David, but with a few more extra better things. I started doing one-offs, which is where I could just play a game in one video and upload it, and I was like, that's a pretty good change of pace because it's exciting to throw those in during a full long playthrough that you're watching. Unfortunately, my most viewed video on this channel is only most viewed because it has the word vor in the title, and if you don't know what vor is, then Urban Dictionary it. But it, it got a little over 2,000 views, and that's just really funny to me. This is also when I started getting a lot more professional with my thumbnails. I started to make them actually pop and stick out and have a theme. Um, and I'm very proud of the way that some of these thumbnails look on this channel. I felt like I really got to a point where when I uploaded, someone could see those thumbnails and be like, Damn, he just uploaded. Sick. Highland Deathbat. Bitpixel. That's my guy. Again, we're going to talk about the future of this channel because I have a plan for it. Uh, but at the time, I really didn't have a plan for it. I was just having fun doing YouTube. I didn't have some kind of like master plan of how I was going to make it work or anything. But I did know that I wanted a side channel so that I could kind of have a little place to shit post and vlog and do things a little less serious. So I created BitPixel Productions. But that channel was basically like, like I said, a shit post and a vlog channel. It was actually highly inspired by my buddy Brody, who I had mentioned earlier, because he had his own little YouTube channel where he was doing chilling with Brody. It could have been hanging with Brody. I feel bad not remembering. But it was just him vlogging, and I don't know. It seemed fun. It seemed cozy, and it was fun seeing my friend do something. So I kind of picked it up and started doing Hanging with BitPixel, which was a more edited version of what he was doing, but... Um, Probably just the same amount of quality, honestly. I even have a video on that channel, and that channel's not very large. It's only like 17 videos or some odd videos. But I have a video on that channel called Stand For Something, which is kind of like a beta version of this video, where I cringily put, like, the history of me over a Watsky song. And, um, while now I kind of look at it and I'm like, ugh, that's kind of a weird thing. Uh, at the time, that video was very awe-inspiring to me. I was, it was like, damn, you know, I've really been doing this for a while and I remember my friend Connor commented on that video and was like damn actually let's pull it up he said beautiful even though we have less than 100 subs and have been doing this off and on for like five years it's been a hell of a ride all the late nights staying at binge recording all the series ideas thought of and forgotten it used to seem magical and now here's this video you've managed to capture some of the magic that makes making YouTube videos well magical and no matter how many terrible changes YouTube makes to their layout, we'll still be recording video games at 2 a.m. hyped up on Mountain Dew. Good luck to you, man. That was nine years ago. And I still think about that comment a lot. And I hope you're watching, Connor. And I hope you know that I still think about that comment a lot. That's what I want. 
I want to create something that has an emotional impact with you. Even if that emotion is a little bit cringy, just something special. I want to be special for you guys, to create something that's special for you guys, and obviously for me, but I want people to recognize that. We'll come back and talk about the future of Highland Death Bat, but I kind of want to talk about a little side project that I started in 2016. This was senior year of my high school, and I had a lot of people around me just talking about their SoundCloud mixtapes, and uh, this is incredibly awful, and I hate talking about it, but I was like, I could do that, and so I did. I put out two albums, um, one called Women, Weed, and Weather, and the other called Instantaneous Power, which is a trash album. It's actually awful. I'm a little bit proud of some of the stuff on Women, Weed, and Weather, especially the uh, album art. I think the album art is hilarious. And much later, I would come back and I would make more music for MC Deathbat. I'm doing a third album called uh, Cooking with the Boys, which I'm actually a little bit more proud of. There's songs in there that I like. But I just thought I'd mention this because it really just shows how often and how much I was just throwing darts at the board, seeing what stuck. You know, it's fun. It's it's not it's not great music, but it's music that I had fun creating, and I actually probably would like to do it more someday once I learn to actually mix audio. It's time to get into the meat and potatoes, the stuff that I think people really actually know about me or know that I've done. In 2017, I left home. I was starting college. I was super excited to leave, but I didn't really have any friends. I was going to school to be a digital media major, which is, you know, making video games and stuff like that, programming, art design, stuff, you know, pe things in that nature. And I met a few people. I'm, I'm not great at making friends. I mean, that's something that you probably know about me if you've met me. Um, I'm, I'm not necessarily shy. I'm just, I'm kind of reserved and I don't really reach out to people that often. Unless, like, you seem like a very special, unique individual, then I'm... I want to be your friend. But I remember there was this kind of cool looking dude um, in class with me. And we are all talking about, I think, our favorite games or something. And he brought up that Persona 4 was his favorite game. Uh, and this friend, this person I just met, uh, his name was also Connor. Spelled different, but you know, if you've watched any couch videos, you know which Connor I'm talking about. I may refer to him as straight ballin' from here on out just to keep it less confusing because there's two Connors in the story now. But you know, straight ballin' was the first friend I made in college and immediately I was like yo I've done YouTube before I would love to do YouTube channels you know with you you know next semester we should house together and do YouTube videos and he agreed he was like this is sick I'm down let's do it uh, let's go I don't really know why but I was like let's make it bigger let's get more people so one day I was sketching outside of class and this guy walks up to me and compliments me on the drawing and we start talking and he had noticed me and I had noticed him because uh, in digital media you go to this big building where, with a bunch of computers and draw pads and you do your art. And a lot of people have videos on at the time and, and he had noticed that we both were watching kind of the same stuff. We were both watching Game Grumps and Super Mega and the same kind of content. So we got to talking. If you haven't figured it out by now, that was Cole. That was, that was Cole that I had met that day. And immediately, you know, I'm like, here's this channel I have. This idea, nothing started yet, but like if you would like to be a part of it, be a part of it because I need all the people I can get. And there was one last member that we had planned who actually didn't ever end up on Couch Force outside of one behind the scenes video, and that was Goose. Uh, we went to college with Goose. I don't know if you're familiar with Goose, but he's a fairly popular Twitch streamer now, and it's probably a good thing that he didn't join us because then he wouldn't have hit fame. Um, but he's a he's he's. He's made a little name for himself, and he was almost, almost a part of our channel. But we ended up not doing that because he couldn't room with us, so we ended up getting a fourth roommate, which was Nathan. And Nathan I had been talking to for a while, and he was kind of also one of my first friends at college. Um, he comes from a place that's not too far from my hometown, so he was like the one person I knew outside of college in a way. And Nathan was a delight to be around. He was funny. He was like kind of like the anti-me and Cole, where me and Cole 
will do a stupid joke and tell it over and over again, and Nathan hates it. He's like the voice of reason in a way in the Couch Force dynamic. And that was that. That was Couch Force. Uh, me and Cole were kind of like the dads of this channel. Me especially because I did everything. I did the thumbnails, the editing, you know, anything that had to do with the videos. Uh, I, it was my computer we were recording on most of the time, I believe. And a lot of early Couch Force starts off as just me and Cole, and it's a very wholesome time because it was... We would get off of class, and we would go straight home to his apartment, and we would start filming. And we would do it for hours. I think it was probably the most peaceful time of Couch Force because we were just pumped to do it. We were just excited as can be to do it. It was fresh. We had a lot of, you know, hope on the horizon for viewership, and we just hit the ground running. And, you know, that's the way we did it. You know, as soon as we get off class, we would go straight to that apartment and film like that for a semester straight until eventually... Me, Nathan, Straight Ballin, and Cole all moved into an apartment and started Couch Force, you know, officially. Kind of like Couch Force 2.0. We had just changed the art style of some of our thumbnails. We had a nice place to stay. We were vlogging it. We were super excited to be in the position that we were in. And that's when things started to kind of get stressful. And that's also where I feel like I need to kind of apologize to Straight Ballin. Uh... See, me and Straight Ball, and we were friends, and we haven't really talked in a long time. And I think that, you know, if I were to message him, things would be okay. But me and him had a lot of creative differences. See, like I said, Couch Force, I did everything for. I, it was like my baby. Cal Cole was like my best sidekick because me and his chemistry was perfect. But me and Connor's chemistry was not all there in terms of commentary. And that's fine. Me and Connor had some creative differences, and it's a little sad because I did really like him as a friend, but I know there was a lot of times he felt like I was leaving him out of ideas or out of plans because he thought that I would straight shoot them down. And I won't lie, there were times I shot them down because the ideas that he came up with, to me at the time, weren't good enough for my child. And that really put a wedge in between us as friends, and I'm only putting this in the video because... I don't think I've ever really acknowledged that. It's a part of me that, and a part of my history that I've never really talked about publicly. And I hope that if he sees this video, he knows that I am sorry about the way I was perceived. And I'm sorry that I didn't make myself more clear. And that maybe I came off as an asshole. Because I don't want to ever be disliked or think that I know what's right. I'm always open to criticism, I'm always open to advice, uh, at the time, you know, a lot less so, because this was the first time I really hit a stride with what I was doing. I mean, you gotta think, at this point, I was doing YouTube for eight years, you know? So, this was the first time I was like, holy crap, I'm doing one of the coolest things I've ever done, I can't fuck this up. Straight balling, if you're watching this video, I am sorry if I ever made you feel like, you know, your ideas didn't matter or that I didn't care what you had to say. On a lighter note, let's talk about fucking Couch Force. Let's talk about the channel. We did a lot of things here. We threw a lot of darts at the board, just like always. But we we're always experimenting what succeeds and what doesn't succeed. We did movie reviews. We did vlogs, which I love that we did. We've done a few skits here and there. We've done one-offs and full playthroughs and best ofs. I mean, this channel is just jam-packed with just, you know... Decent ideas, you know, things thrown at the board. The vlogs are some of my favorite things about that channel. I love those vlogs, and I go back and see them all the time. I hate how awful I am at mixing audio. Uh, I would like to get better at that. And then, for the first time, we really started to dive into Twitch streaming. I had messed around with Twitch streaming earlier on BitPixel a little bit, and I think maybe David, but nothing like this. There's not many duo Twitch streamers. You know, people getting together and filming, you know, their gameplay. So me and Cole started doing Twitch a lot. We would do it almost every single day, and we would just stream. We would stream randomizers and playthroughs and just Minecraft and stuff like that. And we finally started to build a following strong enough that we were able to become Twitch affiliates and actually make money off this stuff. And we didn't make a whole lot, uh, although I still have that Twitch, and I still we still all are affiliates, and I would still like to stream on the channel. We didn't really make anything, and that was fine, because at least we had fans who would talk to us and communicate with us, and we were actually starting to get somewhat of a following. Just as things do, you know, if you're dealing with someone who doesn't really have the joy of creation like you do, 
the drive just kind of goes away and I understand that and we just kind of stopped doing it because we weren't getting the following, we weren't getting the money or the income and so getting together and making time for both of us, me and Cole specifically, just became very hard. Of course in 2019 me and Cole moved out of that apartment and moved back to his hometown uh, unfortunately leaving Nathan and Connor behind straight balling. It just became us. It was just us. Couch Force was just me and Cole and whatever friends we could find on Discord to play games with us. But mostly just me and Cole. And it got harder and harder and harder to create content. And it's not really anybody's fault. It's just now we're doing jobs, we're working, and we're also got this YouTube thing on the side that's not really making us any money. It's just a hobby. And hobbies fade. Hobbies go in and out. You do things and then you don't do things. But for me, uh, this creative drive never really left. I mean, years after we had stopped doing couch videos or months or weeks, I would just randomly put out a nice edited video or something big or something that we were excited about. Things always seem to kind of get in the way for Couch Force. Um, it's just unfortunate, you know. I, I got into a relationship that kind of kept me away from Couch Force, not being able to do it. Um, Cole started to get busy with his other job and Couch Force just kind of faded off into the distance. Now we've done videos on Couch Force that I'm proud of and two of those videos specifically is some of my favorite work I've ever done. There's the Where Are They Now Couch Force video uh, that we did that's kind of like a fake documentary about us saying like, oh, this is where Couch Force is now uh, and that we kind of hate each other, you know, just feeding into that kind of like typical YouTube drama shit. What's life been like post Couch Force? After Couch Force, I mean, so much has happened really. Uh, I've done a whole lot of volunteer work, uh, hospitals where I can, uh, took a trip down to Haiti for a while, uh, got really, really loved the kids there. Um, and then one day I was like, let's do a trivia video. I'll throw together some trivia, we'll get some friends, we'll record it and film it and we'll have a blast, we'll make it like an event. And that video I am super proud of. I think it came out super well, I think it's edited super well. Uh, audio again could be kind of better. I've never been the greatest audio mixer. Same thing on Where Are They Now. I mean, that video is monumental in terms of just writing. It was the first thing we really sat down and scripted and wrote, uh, doing things with friends and stuff. It was reminiscent and reminded me of the Anis Cake days. It was exciting. I was having a blast making this content. But after the trivia video, that's where Couch Force just kind of stopped. I mean, there's a few stray uploads after that, but nothing monumental, just things that we just did in the moment. And unfortunately, I think that's what Couch Force is going to be from now on. Uh, I don't think that we're going to go back to doing live streams or go back to doing full playthroughs. I think that if there are uploads on Couch Force in the future, they're just going to be stray little things. Tier lists, um, you know, skits maybe, if we get around to that. Just, I think Couch Force is not really what it is anymore. And that's fine, because I mean, at the end of the day, Couch Force was started as just a side little hobby to do, to have fun at college. And I am super appreciative of the time that we had doing Couch Force. I love this channel with all my heart, and I wouldn't take back anything that we've done or put out on this channel, because I'm proud of all of it. And this channel has helped me meet people, too. I mean, Couch Force is a big moment in my life. I was in college, I met new people, I met a lot of the friends that I know today and interact with almost daily. Um, I don't know where I would be without Couch Force right now. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank Cole tremendously. He's one of my best friends and he's very important to me and I can recognize and a lot of other people can recognize that the chemistry that we have on camera and in our comedy is once in a lifetime. He is one of the funniest dudes I've ever met and I think that I am funnier with him and around him. Even though I know a lot of our content boiled down to loud noises and stupid repetitive jokes, I knew that we were having fun and if we were having fun someone else was going to pick up on that too. Maybe our sense of comedy was a little niche or, or, or different but we were having fun. We were having a blast, honestly. But let's talk about the future. What's the future hold? What is Highly in Death Bat and where am I going with it? Like I said, I want to keep doing YouTube. I love doing it. I loved making this video. I loved everything that happened in this video. I loved everything I got to talk about. 
And so I want to keep doing it. I want to keep doing it. I'm going to move my creative efforts over to Highlight and Death Bat, though, and make it, you know, my solo channel. Couch Force is somewhat dead, and that's okay, because it had its moment in history, and it may still get stray videos here and there, but for me, all my efforts going forward is going into Highlight and Death Bat. So I have a couple ideas. Uh, I really want to make Highlight and Death Bat recognizable. I want you to be able to see an upload from Highlight and Death Bat and be like, oh shit, a Highlight and Death Bat upload. So, I'm going to start doing more gaming adjacent videos. They still are gaming videos, but not playthroughs anymore. I think playthroughs are almost kind of dead on YouTube. It's hard to follow a playthrough YouTuber unless they're like old and like legendary and cemented in time as one of the best. So, we're going to take a more super cut angle to it. I'm going to start doing randomizers and challenge videos. They're all super cutted down into one video so that you can enjoy the whole game and experience all at once without having to wait for a part two. Same thing uh, for a full game playthrough or if I do something multiplayer with my friends. I'm going to take all the footage for it, super cut it down into one video, and then put it out as a nice little package. Kind of think like Smitty or Vanoss Gaming or like Dunkey. Like those videos, like Dunkey will play through a whole game, think of the last Guardian video, and just edit it down to its funniest bit it's into kind of a storyline. And then Van Austin and Smitty will play some games with their friends and then kind of get like a story but cohesive and funny moments all put into one little video. And finally, I really want to continue doing GG Easies, which is the game show that I had mentioned before. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to re upload the original first episode to this channel I kind of see it as like a pilot but I definitely do want to do more of those because they're kind of like event videos they're big they're massive they take a lot of editing and they're very fun because it means I get to keep interacting with my friends I might live stream someday I still really haven't decided that like I said I still have the couch for twitch which I'd probably keep using because it is affiliated um but I don't know I haven't really landed on what I want to do streaming yet streaming is a lot it's a it's, it's a lot to do but I may, you know, stream multiplayer games and then edit those down to supercuts. I haven't quite came to a decision yet on that. That's that. That's the history of me. And if you made it to this point in the video all the way to the end, I want to say thank you. Um, the past 15 years of YouTube has been really important to me. And I've loved every minute of it. And it's led me to great ways and great paths and great people. And it has deep into my knowledge of how to edit and create and make something that is worth clicking on. And I assume if you've made it all the way through this video, you're probably a closer friend or a family member and not really a typical viewer. But if you're a typical viewer who sat down through this whole thing, I can't thank you enough. And if you are a friend, especially one that has maybe been a part of this video in my history, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because even though maybe a lot of us don't talk as much as we used to or interact at all, you were a big part of my past, and I can't thank you enough because you shared that vision that I had. That joy of creation, the getting together and making something with your friends, and putting it out to the world to see what people thought. And every single one of you, you're, you're, you're all very important to me, from Daniel to Jake to Tanner to Nathan to Straight Ballin to Brody to Austin to Connor to Cole. You're all great. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I think about you all almost every single day. And if you're a typical viewer, and you don't really know what the point of this video is, or you really haven't got anything out of this video, uh, I just want to say that I was hoping that this video would maybe reach someone. And they would see that even though that I have spent 15 years on YouTube, and I have, you know, no financial gain to, to show for it, I still kept doing it. Because... It's not always about the income or the money or the career. It's just about the love of creating. Just the joy of putting something out there and seeing what people think. To put your heart and soul into something and be proud of it. And that be it. Because I have that. I love doing it. I am a huge fan of this process. The creation process is, is great. And I just wanted to put out a message that said, it doesn't matter. If you enjoy it, do it. 
Have fun doing it. Push the boundaries. Do things new. Throw darts at the board. I mean, Lord knows I did. I've done everything from vlogs to music to skits to stop motion to video game playthroughs to streaming. I mean, I've, I've tried it all. And I'm hoping that all my efforts are going to pay off. Thank you for watching. Uh, this video is probably one of the most important videos I've ever made. Um, come back in a week to the main Highland Death Bat channel, and I might have a new upload for you. This has been Highland Death Bat, and I'm signing off.